Hello, everybody. <clears throat> uh, so let's continue where I had to stop last time because I was getting in pain. So hi, Elaine. Glad you made it. Hi, Ramona. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Sharon. So we are going to uh, try again that stamped Mokumegane. And I will show you a few variants of layering because that is super important when you're doing anything. Um, and um, if you watched my... Hi Darla, hi Silver, hi Anna. If you watched my Mokumegane series, uh, in the first video of it, I uh, did note that the person, the artist, who actually... Just a second. And the artist who actually invented Mokumegane, her name is Nan Roche, and um, she first did the stack with deformation, and then uh, she presented in a very old magazine that is not anymore in print, uh, Beads and Buttons. Uh, she presented what was called at the time the impressed Mokumegane, what we call now a stamped Mokumegane. Uh, now remember, I told you before that um, the whole Mokumegane idea um, let me get you the first video in the series in case you didn't watch it where there's a short presentation hi AR, hi Darla, hi Rebecca um, the whole Mokumegane technique um, has been in time more uh, developed hi Hazel, oh my god, 43 Celsius is horrible. Hi Skywalker. Um, and it has been developed in more and more um, uh, variations, actually not really variations, but like the whole thing was developed. Uh, like for example, the hidden magic technique that was uh, first tried, invented by an artist named Jennifer Patterson and if I'm not mistaken was well, sometimes in 2002 uh, actually in my in my video in part 3 uh, that's the third video in the link I actually show exactly the magazine because I do have it <laughs> Um, so if you didn't watch that video, uh, the only thing that I do is that in the beginning I present exactly how Jennifer Patterson did it, um, and then I switched a little bit because to me it didn't look as good with the, uh, the original technique of Jennifer Patterson was with a relatively thick um, layer of black. Uh, I personally showed, I showed my personal view on that that is with a thinner layer of, of black and then my personal uh, contribution to it doing the hidden magic using white as a uh, wrap instead of black the same as you know with my stropel cane I presented the variation of a spiral stropel as well as using white instead of black the way that the original stropel cane is but uh, to get back to to our thing and another thing that I showed uh, that you can find in my Mokumegane series that small mini series is uh, how to make Mokumegane using leftovers cane leftovers as well as a um, double-sided Mokumegane and you'll see there's also a safari bracelet that's 
kind of like a combination of all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's Boku Megane, Mica Shift, and all kinds of other things. Um, now, what I want to make you aware, yes, it is foil and ink. I present the foil and ink technique in the, I think it's the fifth, the fifth uh, video in the mini series so that would be this one and then there's two following ones that show how to two or three following ones that show how to do uh, some pieces with it and because practically the first one is um, general presentation of the let me actually open it in in the display give me just a second and yes i need to add some more tutorials to that okay there we go Alrighty. so the first one is history and color theory where i showed you i explained where it, who invented it um and i'm not going to to turn on the sound but uh it's just a short history of the whole technique what inspired it and then uh, some presentation of the artists who developed it throughout the years and then explaining how to get colors to look properly and how to layer and how to choose the colors okay the second one uh explain the whole explains the whole layering and stacking it follow continues the first one and shows how to choose the colors and then how important it is how many times you you thin it out and color it and the the importance of what color you're choosing and and so on and uh, this is the one where i did not have a so this is how not to but uh this is the one where i did not have a very good blade at the time then the third one is as i sh said before is the hidden magic and see here i show from the magazine and then the the different variants and then my own take on it using white instead of black and then the fourth one is how to use skinner blends in moku megane and uh, i made two different uh, versions one and again choosing the colors exactly how i explained in the first one how to combine colors and this was uh, one is with a straight uh, skinner blend and the other one is with a circular skinner blend and uh, as you can see they are uh, really nice then i have more than one i actually need to add some more here uh, the gold leaf mokumegane with inks and um i made a necklace and then i covered it with a uh, translucent uh kato and i showed how to cure it but there's a there's a couple more actually um this is one as i said i need to i need to add them to that list 
because there's there's some pieces you can find them in another list where it says pieces uh, made projects made using mokumegane that's another list and then uh, this is one with uh, the water 3d effect with mokumegane and it also uses uh, translucence and how it ends up looking and then uh, here there is one that shows how to do spiral type modification see it's part 5 and this one is with inks and foils but the inks and foils it's Lindy Haunani who who came up with it I see that's another one and now this is how to use actually a jelly roll cane how to do mokumegane on a jelly roll cane practically and you can see it's a tricolor a skinner blend and then you deform flatten and stack the cane and you get a very nice looking mokumegane okay let's get back to our thing yes they are all you can uh, if you go to my channel and look in playlists you can find all of them there I put them in playlists because right now I made over 900 tutorial <laughs> videos so it's kind of hard to find something so that's why I made playlists so go to the tab playlists tab if you're looking for a specific type of thing hi CM yeah and i uh, i'm not very good with the sharp with sharpening a blade because it has to be in on the specific angle and with my hands i'm not very good what i do sharpen them on is the the bottom of mugs i don't know if you ever seen patricia thompson uh she made a video let me actually try to find it a video on how to sharpen blades on uh, on the bottom of okay there you go and I'm going to put up the the link so let's get back to that so see you simply use the bottom but you have to have this type of mug not all mugs uh, work very good but you can sharpen even knives you definitely can sharpen your polymer clay blades uh, nevertheless they will never be as good as brand new blades <laughs> I'm gonna be very very honest with you on this one so let me give you the link here okay now remember that last time I wasn't able to cut I wasn't able to to do much uh, of anything and I wanted to show you the difference between um, if you have three colors in a layer how important it is which layer you have on top but there is another thing here uh, it's not that that's important it's also important um because I, I I mentioned in a couple of my videos and the lives that you don't have to have the same thickness of layers in a mokumegane and actually you can get some really neat effects and I showed last time the difference between 
uh, the yellow on a regular setting the same as the white and the black compared to the yellow on a thin setting compared to the white and the uh, black and um, that's what I want to show you I'm not going to be able to show you the machine the pasta machine because I just noticed that somebody played with the cables under my table here again and disconnected the <laughs> camera that goes there because there's quite a bit of um, distance between this camera and where the desktop CPU is so I use a, an extender and somebody played with it and disconnected it He's been really bad. Uh, let me tell you what he did. In the meantime, I'm going to cut some stuff here. So this past week was not very good for me. Number one, I'm, I've been kind of in a funk because of everything that's going on with the Delta variant and with all kinds of stuff in the world. So doesn't put me in a good mood let's put it this way uh actually let me get let me grab two of these and on top of that monday uh, i had a fibro flare started so pretty much monday and tuesday i was kind of wiped out so Wednesday I got up and I started doing stuff trying to catch up on what I didn't do on Monday and Tuesday and uh, so I was quite busy and all of a sudden somebody whose name I'm not going to say suffice to say that um, he's very white and very fluffy he started meowing, but you know that kind of uh, meow that he used to have when he was in a lot of pain before he had to have. Uh, for the ones of you who don't know, I have a beautiful Minwet cat named Finnegan and in november and december of last year i had a lot of issues with him because he kept getting repeated urinary obstructions he was in the er three times and finally i had to get him for surgery and they did a urethrostomy that's where they cut everything and they just make a little opening in his belly to to pee um but from that time i learned that he meows in a certain way when he's in pain i mean meows it's in quite improper because normally he doesn't meow he squeaks but anyway so wednesday he started squeaking like mama i'm in pain i went and checked and he was peeing, he was eating he would even play when i would stop what i was doing to try to get him uh, yeah, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and, uh, but he just kept, you know, crying like if he was in pain. Anyway, so I called a vet. I scheduled him for Friday. And around 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I finished whatever I wanted to finish. I was supposed to finish and... Uh, I lay down on the couch to start winding down for the day. He came, laid down on me, you know, stretching his little fluffy throat for rubs and kisses, and that was it. There was no more crying, no more I'm in pain, no more nothing. Thursday morning I wake up, I didn't have so much stuff to work on around the house, so I worked on my laptop 
sitting on the couch, you know, most of the time with the hand on him. He was fine. So I had Thursday afternoon, I had to call the doctor and say, I am so sorry, I have to cancel Finnegan's appointment for tomorrow because he was just play acting to make me stop what I was doing and get my attention. And yesterday he just kept stealing socks from the laundry basket. Anyway, so these are all on the thickest setting. And what I'm going to do is going to leave one black and one white on the thickest setting. But I am going to get one black and one white thinner and relatively quite thin. I mean, on a makings, it would be like a seven, okay? Again, sorry, I forgot to cut a second one here. And then I am going to use um, actually, I'm not going to even use one at the thicker setting, I'm going to reduce one orange uh, by like a four. So, uh, medium thick, right? And one on a seven. Oh, and by the way, I got, uh, and we're gonna check it towards the end of this. I got one of Trish as now some cernit um, textures and this I thought that the spirals were much bigger but they are very tiny and they are very delicate so I'm going to try this on a um, mica shift all right now let's set them so one of them will have the white on top and the other one will have the white on the bottom and actually in order to show you properly I need to make two of each. So hold on. And let's grab and I need this one on a four. To do the whole different thing okay so there will be two variations uh, principal variations one of them would be with the white on top and the other one will be with the white with the black on top so we have one white on top and black on top then the next variation will be one of them will have the orange down to a four and the other one the orange down to a seven okay so let's do it this way so we have this that's going to have the white on top right and then one of them is going to have the seven orange the other one is going to have the four thickness orange then the black on top again one of them is going to have the seven thickness 
don't forget to use my my affiliate link so I can do more giveaways and then here I'm going to use the fourth thick thickness okay so let's start stacking them So this is the one with the orange fourth. Yeah, make sure when buy while I she still has because there's always a and with the COVID infections increasing, we might be looking at another shortage. But now she's fully moved, so shouldn't be any kind of delays in what she has in the store. Alrighty. Let me try and do a little bit more chop chop. going to be easy to see which is which because obviously the one with that's going to be longer will have more the the thicker orange okay so I'm going to get each of them through the pasta machine on the thickest setting first. Okay, so the top ones are with the thicker um, orange and the bottom one is with the thinner orange. Now the next move is to get them through the pasta machine with the texture and I'm using these makings because it goes through the pasta machine with the clay. So what I want, I want these circles to be raised, not in. So, because the makings is a uh, double sided, I'm going to make sure that the raised part goes outside of the clay. Okay? Uh, my next thing is to put a little bit of armor all on the clay. Remember, when you use texture on clay, always use the release agent on the clay not on the texture because if you use it on the texture it's going to uh, it might just pull in the recesses of the texture
and these ones I went one size down that's another thing that I should have told, told you about so you can go on the same size like you started with the thicker setting and you set it on the thick, thicker setting if you want a much deeper thing you go down one setting okay so let's go ahead and talk about shaving them and I'm going to actually do a comparison with the shaving I'm going to leave one of them on the table and one I'm going to put on a base and I'm going to just use this so let's make sure that this is and then get some release agent on the blade because this is a shaved mokume it's not a sliced mokume right and of course you can use um, what I did in the past, I do have some really awesome stamps, but um, stamps are not very good because uh, they press in, and for this technique you want something that stands out so you can shave it. Um, so what I did, I just used bake and bend, right? Uh, one thing that you need to think whenever you that's why I did them in two different variants one thing that you need to remember when you do this kind of stuff is that you do the raised parts up and you're going to shape them so the base the background it's going to be the top but whatever is raised is going to go towards the bottom layers okay so let's go ahead on this one okay i went too deep And remember for doing this kind of stuff for me is kind of hard but nevertheless you still get you can get some nice pieces so this is the whole idea for people who have hand issues like mine the difference between shaving on on the tile compared to shaving on a surface yeah I cannot do sculptures anymore because of my hands yeah there are some brands of textures that can go in the machine those are the um, uh, makings and I recommend the makings full heartedly that's why I'm using one of them uh, because they come in uh, sets of four different textures and they are around five dollars per set so you can find them at Hobby Lobby but Trish has them as well okay so this would be what I am able to do if I shave it on a sitting on a on the tile now let's go ahead and let me shave it what the heck is on my finger let me shave it 
on a base and as I said I'm, I'm using this mousse ring that I normally um, uh, use for bracelets and remember you can find these in the baking blanks section um, you can use this kind of stuff you can use a jar you can use a tumbler you can use whatever and actually I showed this the first time when I did the um, how to make mokumegane out of scraps okay so you can if you have the regular rigid blade you can use the regular rigid blade make sure that it's uh, sharp obviously my hands used to be very steady but because of the cervical spine damage and nerve damage I have twitches and as I told you guys before I used to sculpt a lot of art dolls and stuff but when it got to the point that I would work for two days on a doll and then I would work on it and then my hand would twitch and I would just throw it on the other end of the room destroying everything I worked for I, okay time to stop sculpting I do have days when I can still sculpt but uh, I don't dare to get on uh, big projects because I was selling those dolls anywhere from I think that the cheapest art doll I mean I, I was making some tiny ones too that were cheaper but the, the actual art dolls were anywhere from 250 to over a thousand and the art dolls that are well done are quite expensive I told you my I have a girl crush on Nicole West okay so you simply because this way you just cut fairly straight as I said make sure that you have a, a good sharp blade and do get from time to time to get the armor roll on it because this way even if you shave several times you can kind of control you have the control that otherwise if you have damaged nerves otherwise you don't have when shaving straight on the uh, table I did do some mess ups I'm trying to go faster through this so I can show you more stuff than just one thing okay and you can use a thin flexible blade as well and it can be longer or shorter but talking about the depth as you can see what I did here I didn't go very deep right if you want to get to the this is the thickest orange as you can see going through the thickest orange it's hard to get to the bottom to the white now let's see what happens with the thinner orange that's why I said be very careful what what uh, size what thickness are your layers so going with the thinnest, the thinnest uh, orange let's see what we can do with this and you'll see it's a completely different and uh, by the way I know that people don't like to be reminded that artists also sell tutorials but uh, hi Gail but I have at least one awesome Mokumegane tutorial for sale on my uh, website for now uh, soon should be on Amazon video that is the the smoke effect I will show you here in a minute 
that it's also a stamped mokumegane. And this could have gone even thinner than this. But once again, I'm not able to do much of a good cut here. It can look cool, but it doesn't look as cool. So, as you can see, I'm not able to do much on this one. Now, let's try on the baking blank. But the deeper the you manage to do the impression, the best it is going to be. So, I think I caught something underneath here. even thinner than this at this point so let's go with an even thinner thing now what I'm going to do I'm going to do this I'm going to get this one I'm going to get it in half so practically you need to go very very thin with the top layers I'm going to get it through the machine again making sure that I'm on the right side and now I should get the proper the proper thing want to mess it up again. So actually get half on the tile. There we go. It's supposed to be much thinner than what I did. I'm gonna try again the other one with much thinner layers. hear you what I need to do I need I didn't do in a long time these stashes and I need to do some these stashes I have a ton of beads a ton of pieces get off so I'm going to have to to do that but it takes me at least a day to prepare the these stashes because it's about figuring out how to balance them out you know so because remember I, when I do the packages for the these stashes I'm trying to do them so they would be special for somebody who likes more canes or somebody who likes more for gemstones or stuff like that My hands are starting to hurt. And uh, let's see on the tile. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna redo the, the one with the black on top here in a second. Because that's how the black was supposed to look like as well. I had a friend, I don't know if you remember her. She died in 2018. If you remember Deborah, Deborah Rice, she 
had a very nasty case of brain cancer, glioblastoma. And she was gone within six months from diagnosis. But she had a lot of issues like I do. And uh, it was very hard for her to, to get good imprints. So what she would do, she had a pretty heavy, you know, one of those old cutting boards that are this thick wood stuff. So she would put her working tile on the floor in the kitchen, the clay on it, the texture on it, and then the cutting board on the texture and then she would get up and stand on the cutting board so there would be enough pressure to get a good that was the only way that she could get a good uh, imprint you know okay so let's redo the the black on top and see if we can use this for anything or if they are just a loss get them even thinner I'm going so it's supposed to have the black on top so the black on seven and the orange on seven And then to make it even thicker, I'm going to just use the one of these as base. So you can use pretty much anything. Okay. Yeah, Debbie was a very sweet soul. And it was horrible too. She changed very much in the end because the tumor was in her the occipital area, the area that practically makes you who you are, his personality and and all that. Well, I do remember her often. Okay, so now let's go. I'm going to first go with the Okay, I'm going to go. Why did I put this on it? Because I first need to get this on a one. And of course I messed it up. Because this is what happens when I don't take these off. I don't see. Damn it. Just a second. I need more white.
This is not. If you don't mind, I think I'm going to turn on my massager. I'm starting to get spasms on my the muscles on my back. just miffed at myself because I got in a hurry you know to make sure that I get it back to one Get it first through a one. Then I'm turning the machine one setting down, giving it a little bit of armor all, and then go with it and again make sure that I have these raised on the side that I want them to show. work on it. I apologize. But you know, things happen. Yeah, you know, I always say if this is the worst thing that can happen in my life right now, then I'm very happy. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and do first the on a base one. Oh, by the way, remember I was telling you that uh, I get these rigid blades at uh, Hobby Lobby and that's the only place that they have the Amaco rigid like this. This I got last at Hobby Lobby. It's not the same thing. This is what they used to have. And see how it's got these little things here. The old one, very rigid. The new one, much thinner. So, they got bad when it comes to that quality too. Okay, so just very gentle, so you can get through some white too. One 
one thing I have to do this afternoon and it's gonna take me like an hour is I need to trim my fingernails and it's a pain as I first need to wash some dishes by hand to soften them up and then I get the toenail clipper and then I have to get one of those diamond nail files to round them up okay What I want to show you is that there is a quite a difference between uh, depending on what you put on top and what you put on the bottom when it comes to the layering. Thank you. Yeah, you ladies have been with me through all the crap I had to go through at least it kind of slowed down because at one point it was like bad stuff happening then it would end I would have like two or three days I would start catching up and then more bad stuff happening so So I'm gonna tell you a secret I've been so much in a funk because of I mean don't get me wrong I'm not depressed I am enjoying my life doing the stuff that I like to do only that I wasn't very creative I was not much in a creative state of mind because of everything that's going around but one thing I started doing and I noticed it helps I was because I was in such a funk that uh, the ones of you who know me for a while know that I'm also a gamer so I was in such a funk that I didn't even play my favorite game and I started practically forcing myself to play at least for half an hour every evening before I go to bed and it did help okay now let's see because this one I didn't do a very good job but it's okay so black on top versus white on top see the difference there's a pretty big difference now, one thing that I can do with all this messed up stuff, I can try and do a spiral roll and see what that brings us. Hold on. So let me grab this as well. So this one I already folded it. Let me unfold it if possible and see I mean I'm just want to see oh I only play uh, MMORPGs I play Guild Wars 2 honestly that's what when I was going through chemo and all the breast cancer treatment that is what kept me sane the games because I could play you know and practically immerse myself in that fantasy world okay so let's see if we can do something with this so I'm going to first roll it Maybe I'm just inventing something. We'll see. 
We'll see if it if it's just crap or if it's something that looks good. You know, it happened to me before that stuff that I thought was a complete loss came up pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna get it through the machine on the thickest setting. But this time, actually, I am going to use a different one and I'm going to press my heart on it. I want to try and see how it looks on these leaves. Actually, you know what, let me still try these, because they are easier to do, so, this way, and one down, two down, just in case. Okay, it was a little bit longer than the whole thing, but, let's see. We have a saying in Romania about people who are resourceful and talented that, pardon my French, and apologies for the actual French people who might be watching this, <laughs> but the Romanian saying is, um, they made the whip out of a poop. If that makes sense. I mean, that would be the raw translation. So let's see if we manage to make a whip. Not everything, Ramona. You have no idea how many things I experiment on before I actually do a tutorial. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is pretty. I'll have to, to refocus. This is beautiful. I must stop talking like that because if I don't, Connor's going to come. Oh, it's the, the water effect. Oh my goodness, and then it takes me forever to layer to get the water effect. And look at it, it kind of came up just the rippling water effect. I mean, it just came up just perfect, just like this. Goodness gracious me. So, in essence, just layer <laughs> different thicknesses, roll them, thin them out to oblivion, and then get this on them. Hold on, I need to wipe the blade. <laughs> Merci, Kuma. Oh, this is beautiful. I need to try this with other colors as well. So, to remember for the future, the rippling water effect can be obtained by rolling. <laughs> Not just by layering. Yeah, that is true. Okay, this I didn't do a terrific job here, but anyway, this is neat. Let me let me zoom in. See if I you can see it good if I just zoom in. Well, I'm 60, so I don't really say poop. I say the other thing. Okay. Look how pretty. Look how gorgeous. So this is one thing to remember, huh? Exactly the rippling effect. So I guess I should make a tutorial on that, huh? <laughs> 
things that one discovers by accident. I wonder how this looks with uh, layers of black, white, and uh, some two different shades of gray and maybe a bluish gray. This should look gorgeous. I'm gonna experiment and if so, I'm gonna experiment because this was just an accident but I'm going to experiment on uh, what's the best way to do the spiral thing and see if I can give you a controlled stamped uh, ripple water effect but this is great so let me let me get you what package this is from let me see on polyclay play first because this come uh, for the people who never bought the ma makings texture again they come in um, packages of four and the packages have a a letter a b c d and i'm trying to find for you which of them is this one okay so it's the set h and it's 473 on at polyclay play get it for you so you go to textures and you go to makings texture and it is you can see all the different texture yeah, it has a wood grain and then this very weird one and then this one that's awesome for metal and then the the circles so just in case and as I said it's 473 so you get a lot of texture out of and uh, remember as I said before um, you don't have to have super handy materials and textures and only your clay has to be good quality because I don't know and it doesn't I need to check on the keywords on that one but I have I know that I have a tutorial with a pendant with no tools okay let's get to it give me a second where I showed that uh, you don't really have to have any tools and I didn't use absolute I didn't use any tools specific to polymer clay just you know um, eyeshadow and I cut with the needle and I showed exactly how to do a pendant without needing any kind of tools that you can see it it's not too bad it's uh, from the beginnings so it's not a super good quality um, video but as I said you don't have to have super duper um, textures it is true that for some projects a good quality texture is needed this is why uh, as much as I do recommend you not to spend too much on uh, on textures and stuff because you can do a lot with just makings um, nevertheless get a few textures that are good quality and I always uh, recommend uh, and on with them I'm no affiliate of them or anything the cool tools textures that are expensive i mean this size of texture is like 17 dollars but uh they are super duper quality they are the best quality of textures that i've ever seen and because they are made for um, um, 
PMC for precious metal clays, so for real deal uh, jewelry, and um, they last forever and they make beautiful, beautiful impressions. And this is the one that I wanted to to try this on, but not knowing how I so. Uh, get yourself and this one because they are so big you can use them for uh, bracelets because they are as long as the bracelet I'm bad I know I wanna see oh look at this it's so pretty okay I messed up here but it's so pretty look at this look at this pretty oh, I'm gonna work on stuff <laughs> after I go lay down to to soothe my back anyway I hope you enjoyed it and um, let me know in the comments even after if you didn't watch it when it was broadcasted if you watch it after let me know in the comments what are the stuff you'd like to see remember it has to kind of be able to be condensed in an hour and not require baking or or stuff like that so and whatever you want to know more about and i will uh try and figure out by the way look at this pretty inclusions for uv resin i got from trish with my last order it's just pretty i wanted to to test this but my back is hurting and i've been on for more than an hour but i'll try and use it in a new by the way if you did if you missed last week announcement uh trish finally got the berry uh, the berry beads that can be used for the uh hammered metal for metal effect and they are so 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 easy to use and um i made a very short video for her you find it on the page you go into textures and to various stuff you'll find these beads they are very cheap and there's a little video that shows you how to use it i mean it's not like it's a big deal you just go like this with it you know and you get a hammer thing perfectly okay uh did you check the drawer knobs i know i do have a tutorial on drawer knobs so that's done with uh cane but uh yeah i did get some drawer knobs i do have the blanks for them i can do them so um by the way i might come up i got this from Trish it's a very pretty thing and it looks like lace um, I'm not sure how soon but I'm going to do a tutorial with it at one point or another so okay I hope to see you next Sunday and don't forget to thumbs up don't forget to use my <laughs> Amazon uh, influencer store and my uh, affiliate link they are all in the video description and uh, thank you so much for being with me and don't forget to comment and tell me if you want to see something specific okay thank you so much have a wonderful wonderful Sunday goodbye <laughs>